Okay, so this tutorial addresses how to create all the different features and elements inside the sugar skull template uh, that we're going to create. Uh, this illustration right here is a finished one I completed, and you can see that I've got a lot of different elements going on. I've got variegated line thicknesses, I've got repetitive dots, I've got petals, leaves, uh, and a lot of floral uh, decoration going on, uh, a lot of detail to it. So I'm going to talk how we can actually create a lot of this stuff. Uh, if we start off with the template, one of the first things we need to make sure we do is actually go ahead and put in a horizontal and a vertical uh, guideline so as we know exactly where the center of the, the, uh, the template is. Uh, I'm just creating a circle right there for the eye. I'm going to make sure that I have another one on the other side. However, really, this is something that we can actually do by blocking off one side of the face so that we only have to pay attention to this side right here. And we can come back and then duplicate and reflect this over later on. One of the first tools that I actually want to show you is that we can actually come up to effect with the circle. And we can actually change the appearance by using distort and transform. And we can pucker and bloat. And I'm also going to show you zigzag. So if I start with pucker and bloat, and you can see when I choose the preview, if I bloat this, it'll actually turn into what appears like uh, flower petals. Okay, if I push this a little bit more, you can see they start to curve a lot more. This is related to the idea that there are four anchor points. So if I was to now go choose my plus anchor point tool, I could actually add more anchor points to this to actually give this flower appearance. Okay, so the more uh, anchor points I put, the more flower petals it will actually appear. So I can do that one. Uh, I'm going to create another circle real quick. This one, again, another circle. Uh, this time what I can do is actually come up to effect and I can choose instead of pucker and bloat this time I actually want to choose zigzag and this will actually provide me with a repetitive kind of petal appearance around the edge. So I'm going to choose preview. This has obviously got straight lines. I want to avoid that. The sugar skull illustration has a lot of curved sort of organic lines moving around it. So if I actually go to smooth, all of a sudden you can see it smooths out those sharp corners. Uh, I can sort of drop the side down a little bit so you can see that it's a more sort of gradual curve, but I can also change the number of retro bridges that appear. So I could actually increase that and drop that down some more to give a slight curved appearance. Okay, so with both of these in play, what I can actually do is make a copy, so Command C, and then I can also paste a second one right here. Now, if I actually was to start to play around with not just my fill, but my outline as well. What I can actually do is turn this one with a white outline. So I'm going to come over and choose my color, choose outline, and you can see now I have a thin white outline on that. I'm actually going to increase this up quite considerably, and I'm going to bring this one in front. So object, arrange, bring to front. Now if I actually select both of these, and then I want them to actually uh, align with one another. I can click on this one one more time, and this shape will move on to that one. So I'm going to align it, and then we should see that when I move these, it will actually create two objects sitting right on top of one another. I'm going to do this one more time, so I'm going to copy. But this time I'm actually going to paste in back so it goes behind this shape. This time I'm going to turn my outline back to black again and I'm going to increase this. So as you can see, what's actually happening is that I'm creating a black fill, a white outline, and then a black fill again. So I'm actually creating a lot of repetitive lines going over the top of one another. Okay. If I was to then pull this in front, I can center this, and this is where my flower could be. So I could do the same with this one. I can do a white fill, and then I can put a black outline, and then I can go place a circle inside of here. I could place another circle, and I can keep going. A lot of these uh, illustrations use repetitive lines, repetitive shapes to actually give the decoration. Okay, so this is the first thing that we'd want to consider using, either on the eye. So I could actually now move this into place. I can place that right there for the eye, and I can continue decorating in some way or another. I could create another one of these, so I could do a copy. And then I can actually 
choose paste in front, and then I could actually just rotate this slightly, and then I would get that same shape again. And I could change this slightly so it would actually come up the middle. So you can see that I'm creating this very decorative eye. Uh, the other thing that uh, we can then look at, if I start with that circle again, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a black outline on here. And I'm going to increase this up quite considerably up to like 14, 15 point. And then we're actually going to pay very close attention to our stroke panel. And when we actually open this up, first thing you need to be aware of is that you're going to open up the options. So come up to the little menu and show options. And we're actually going to start playing around with the dashed line appearance. When I choose dash line, you'll see that it breaks up the outline going around the edge. Again, we're back to very sharp lines and corners, so I'm actually going to round that cap and round the corner, and now we've got these kind of little bumps going on. The dash is actually how much of the outline ink is actually showing. The gap is how much of a space between those gaps. So if I have a weight of 15, I actually want to put a gap of 15. And then when I reduce this down to zero, what it does is actually create these little scalloped effect going all the way around. Okay, uh, if I was to copy and then paste in front, I could change my outline to white, and that creates the exact same circle sitting over the top, but in a new color. And then I'm going to reduce this down, just the thickness, not the gap or the dash, but just the thickness or the weight, and then you get these little dots appearing inside of that. Okay, so if I was to then create another circle directly over the top, and remove this outline, you'll see that it'll actually give that appearance as though it actually has a scalloped petal edge to it. So it's a lot of repetitive circles, repetitive shapes sitting right over the top of one another. So if I do that one more time, um, create one more circle, this time I'm going to increase the weight, change my outline to black, and do the same thing again, I'm going to create a dash line, and there's the dash line, but without the cap or the corner, so I'm going to have to go click and both of those on, and you can see now what it's actually creating, because the gap is bigger than the weight, it's actually creating a gap between those. So I actually want this appearance so I can give this dotted appearance. So I don't have to go in and make each individual dot. This isn't just a stroke outline and that I can then apply that wherever I want. The final appearance I can show you is with the pen tool. If I was to create a line, there's the line of dots because I've got a zero dash and the cap rounded off and the corner rounded off. And then I can actually come down to these profiles. Now these should show up. And when you do that, you can see that they actually vary in their width. And there's a profile right there. So that's the actual appearance. And now I have this on a broken line. So I can change the gap and actually pull these in tighter. So this will give me various different appearances just using a single pen line to actually work my way through and actually create a dotted pattern along the path. Continue using these techniques. You can also use one where you would create a curve. This time we're going to remove the dash line, increase the thickness, and then change the profile so that I can get this kind of appearance. I can create a lot of lines like this very easily. And then choose the variegated appearance. So you can see I can create this kind of appearance very quickly to give kind of a vine or a organic curve to something. 